Trade Talk, powered by Travis Perkins. Hello, I'm Sally Wallace, and this week is National Apprenticeship Week. On this episode, we plan to answer as many questions and queries that you have surrounding apprentices and apprenticeships. Joining me in the studio today is... Rory from Woodhouse Limited, which is a plumbing and electrical firm, which has been going for 17 years. And if you're a regular listener, then you'll know Carl. Carl, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, yes. Uh, my name is Carl Conway from KLC Builders, based in South Manchester. We do general building, uh, repairs, extensions. Been working for around 35 years. Joining us virtually today is Andy. Andy, can you introduce yourself for us, please? Yeah, hi everyone. So my name's Andy Rayner. I look after apprenticeships, early careers, skills, that sort of stuff for the Travis Perkins Group of Businesses. I've been doing that for about 10 years, but I've pretty much been in the sector since I left school. And I'm your host, Sally Wallace. I've now been with my tradesman husband for 16 years, which means I've endured 16 years worth of trying to fish receipts out of the glove box of the van, Ugh, trying to save my washing machine from drill bits and don't even get me on ad blue. <laughs> Anybody who has a vehicle that takes as much ad blue as ours will totally get where I'm coming from. Don't even get me started on ad blue, actually. So today we are talking about all things apprentices and apprenticeships. With it being National Apprenticeship Week, this is a topic that often comes with a lot of questions and it can be viewed with mixed opinions as well. So it's also a bit of a grey area in many cases too. So there's going to be lots of questions asked today and hopefully an awful lot of questions answered when I say grey area, it's one of those things as to whether you're too old or, you know, what do you do? What do you do in the trade if you want to take on an apprentice? And not only that, what if your apprentice leaves? Is it going to cost you money? Um, have you actually got time to train someone up? Is anybody going to help you as well? And so that's what we're hoping to do today is answer all of these questions for you in this episode. So, Andy, can you tell us a little bit more about what it is that you actually do and what, what you're hoping to achieve at the moment in your current position? Yeah, so apprenticeships have been going for a long time. And when you think about how many people join the, join the sector and join the trade, it's often through the, through the apprenticeship route. And it's really, really important that we keep encouraging young people to, um, to come into the, into the sector. And apprenticeships are the most effective and efficient way of, of doing that. But the reality is we're just not getting enough at this moment in time. So depending on how you do the math, you know, if you talk to people like the CITB, they'll tell you we need about 45, 50,000 people joining the sector each year. The reality is we're getting about twenty to 25,000 apprentices joining the sector. We simply don't have enough apprentices joining the sector. And, and you, know, you know what it's like at the moment. There's, there's probably not enough trades to go around. There's plenty of work to do. That just gets tougher and tougher unless we can attract more people to join. So at Travis Perkins, we take that really seriously. You know, that we're, we're here to, to, to partner with the trade, to help the trade get the job done. And, and you know, if, if we don't have enough tradesmen out there, well, things don't get built. So we, we have a serious problem. So we're working really hard to try and bring more apprentices into that into the sector. So we do that as, as a business. We, we do, we train our own apprentices. We're lucky to be big enough that we can, uh, we, we're able to do that. And we train, you know, we've usually got a thousand or so apprentices on scheme. We actually now train apprentices for other people. And we set ourselves a big, hairy, audacious goal, which was that we wanted to train 10,000 apprentices by 2030. So to graduate 10,000 apprentices into the, into the, the business and, and, and other businesses by 2030. So that's really what we're about. We're really working hard to bring 10,000 apprentices into the construction sector. So it's interesting you say that because um, Jake, who's actually been on previous episodes, he started at Travis Perkins as an apprentice. He joined the apprenticeship scheme. And I mean, he's been incredibly successful to date so far in his career. I think he's actually overseeing one of the um, one of the depots at the moment in Cheshire. So he's done really well and sort of built his way up the ladder. So what sort of age, when you say apprentice, you want people to, to join? Is, are you looking at young people from 16 up? Well, it's kind of, that's the stereotypical thought of apprentices, isn't it? It's, it's youngsters out of school and, 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 you know, and then young kids coming into, into the business and into work for the first time. But actually our apprentices aren't that. So, so we, we do have lots and lots of, of young people joining us on apprentices often coming into their first career, which makes absolutely sense. But, but we've, we've also got a change in economy out of there. So the world's shifting and moving at a rate and not, you know, think about what's happening in retail with stuff going online more and less people working in shops. So actually what we're seeing is an awful lot of people switching over to us from different backgrounds and different careers to come and join us as, as apprentices. So it's not just youngsters, it's, it's a real mix. And, and you know, I think our oldest apprentice we've ever had is 58. I think the average age of our apprentices at the moment is around about 30, 31, 32. So yeah, lots of youngsters, but also lots and lots of people who are on sometimes a second or third career coming across and working in construction. Now that's really interesting because whenever I hear the word apprentice, I think of uh, an out-of-school individual. Now if I can just... 
um, offered this to the, the gents that are in the studio with me today. I mean, Rory, you own your own plumbing firm and y- you do have apprentices, don't you? Yeah, we've currently got about eight apprentices at the moment and they do vary in age. I, I tend to agree they are typically younger when they've come out of school or college and little unsure what to do and decide to go down that route. But again, there are people who've tried alternative careers. It's not worked out for them or what they want to do long term. Um, and then they've come into the trade as an apprentice at a later date. But it, I do feel it is harder the older people get because they do have more commitments financially. So it's difficult to take a bit of a pay cut to go back down to that level. But I do find the people who are a little bit older sometimes progress a little bit quicker and a bit more committed. So, uh, Carl, you've had apprentices before. Do you have one at the moment? Uh, no, I've not had any other apprentices at the moment. I'm a bit put off sometimes. Um, I, I agree that we need the younger generation to get in and you don't see many of the new trades people coming in as young generations, even though they've put it into the school category of building and construction, which is a good thing because obviously it gives them a head start. But what I was a bit disappointed with is I've had lads in the past and uh, one particular lad that I took on through the CITV and uh, he lasted, I think, five or six years. He worked well. He was he was good for us. Uh, we got the grants at the time he was going to the college, which the grant kind of covers yourself. So if I was to stop laying bricks and I wasn't earning any money because I was showing the young lad how to do something, that's the time I'm losing out. So the grant was there to say, okay, we understand that your time is important and you're losing, so there's your money. But what I was upset about is when the lad left, I still have to fill a levy for me in every year and I can't get out of that. Now, I don't pay anything because of the amount of levy for the employees that you have. I don't have that amount of employees. So I do have to fill it in each year. But if I had the employees that was earning for me, I would still have to pay the levy for that lad. Now, whether they're telling me anything different or that's wrong, well, that just put me right off. Now, this is quite interesting because Carl can't be the only tradesperson that's actually experienced this. And therefore, it must be a bit of a red light for other tradespeople as well, especially if you're working for yourself and you're not a huge outfit or a a big corporation, which is why I mentioned earlier that there's such a grey area around this at the moment, because, you know, you could take on an apprentice with great intentions and then eventually be out of pocket. But also there's the apprehension there as well about taking on somebody, um, spending time with them, putting all the effort into training and teaching them, and then for them to quit and and leave. They need to teach the lads beforehand if there's an apprenticeship or not, because as we just mentioned before, that you need that that employer to go into the college to get learning of what trade you want. And when I started, the first year that I started, they gave me um, the first year of doing six other trades. So you had six weeks of plumbing, electric, six weeks of joinery, six weeks of bricklaying. So that then made that lad decide of what he wanted to do. It wasn't just pushed into something that you were going to waste your time with. Both Rory and Andy have touched on this subject of the success and longevity of having the older apprentice. So does this seem to be the case, Andy? Does the older, when we say older, it sounds like <laughs> I've got some old boy, but I mean, more. I suppose somebody who's a bit more worldy then, somebody who's had more life skills, does does that actually appear to, uh, to be the more committed individual, somebody who's had a little bit more life experience? Yeah, I think this, we don't actually see much of a difference, to be fair. I think, um, yeah, there's a really valid point in what Rory says about the complexity sometimes about taking youngsters, especially working with the CITB over, over levy payments, does get quite complicated and more complicated than it needs to be. So I think that's valid. But, but to be honest, we see we see good retention from from our younger apprenticeships coming in, but also from our, um, our, our older apprenticeships who are in career changes. We don't see particularly difference levels of people who, who, who stay or leave. Um, I mean, the good news on the, the CITB levy, there is a review going through with the government on that at this moment in time, which is due out, I think, in the next few weeks, which hopefully will make things simpler. Because um, because there's no question that 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 that, that levy payment process has got far too complex for uh, for most people to uh, to enjoy. So this is actually putting people off. Well, it's it's you know it's putting tradesmen yeah. off taking on apprentices, which in turn is stopping encouragement for for people to join the trade and to get skills. I mean, just speaking from experience uh, with Scott, my husband, he struggled for years to actually get younger lads to to take the job seriously and see it as as a bit of a golden opportunity, really. Um, how can I word this? Um, I, I do believe there is still a lack of respect for tradesmen and the skills that are required. 
And it still feels like there's an element of, well, you know, you didn't do very well at school, so you just join the trade or be a brickie. It's almost like it's it's just not got the respect that it deserves. And, and we've talked about this actually on previous episodes where there's still very much that archaic mindset about the trade with builders bums, builders having a brew, builders houses are a mess. And this, you know, it's just not the case. Whereas in fact that these are skills, everything that's in the trade is a skill. Um, and if you actually embrace the skills and really get good at them as well, that's the opportunity to have an incredible successful career and sterling reputation. Now, Rory, you actually and heating firm and the work that you do is very complex now. So surely this isn't the sort of job um, where someone who hasn't done well at school, you know, has underachieved. Surely they can't just walk in and think, oh, do you know what? I've not done anything else. I might as well just be a plumber. Especially with the new technologies, there's a lot more specification taking place. So a lot of calculations prior, everything's got to be specified, calculated. So, yeah, it is. I think. My opinion on the apprenticeship scheme is that it needs reviewing from start to finish. So when I was, I've, I'm, I've gone through the apprenticeship scheme and I started off as a, a plumber, but I only went down that route because I got a plumber worked at my house and I thought, oh yeah, I'll have a bit, I'll have a bit of that, I'm not, why not? Whereas if there was something a bit more communal at school, where you, you know, all the local businesses could go, they could chat to people, I think some kids get pushed into it or they just go for it because they think oh, a plumber or electrician or a builder earns a lot of money they go into it for the wrong reasons and then if it's not for them they're then put off the other thing as well is so in germany an apprenticeship is treated like a degree whereas over here and this is only from my experiences in the colleges it's a bit like bums on seats let's get people past we get our funding i think yeah. if it was we've had guys who come to us who've done apprenticeship to other companies a full electrical apprenticeship and all he's done for four years is put cable trail that's not his fault but that's just what they've done i think it's it's i'd be very surprised if you don't pass unless you don't turn up you know it just needs to be the, the benchmark needs to be lifted promoted and more, promoted more, more. Yeah. And, it, and then i think that will uplift the fact that it is seen as a you know real qualification you know it, it, when i left school it was just the university that was very structured but the apprenticeship was like, well, you go out, let us know what you want to do, go and find a college. There was no medium that sort of helped you find the right job for you. And how does that compare within Travis Perkins, Andy? Is it seen as a qualification? Yeah, so I think I think our situation is slightly different as much as we, we do the training ourselves. So, so we're a college in effect, so we, we train our own people, but we're big enough to do that. So when you've got scale, that's easy. But when, you, when you're a smaller organisation, it's not so, so simple to do that. I think the good news is that that perception is changing. So apprenticeships changed in 2017. There was a there was a whole load of government legislation put in place. It means that every apprentice now, and it started in 2017, it really only affects people who are qualified since about 2020, has to do what's called an endpoint assessment. So they're assessed at the end of that course to make sure they've got the skills. So nowadays you have to do a bit more than turning up. I agree that was sometimes the case in the past. <laughs> but now you have to actually know what you're doing because some geezer's going to come and he's usually an next trade who's going to come and spend three or four hours with you and you can have to walk him through everything that you know and and, and that's pretty set by um by the by an, an industry standard so so i think we're in a much much better place now but we've only been there for like three years and and to be frank you know covid happened for most of that time so, so it's, it's really just coming through so i think we're going to see a better standard of people coming off apprenticeships and absolutely they're seen as a, as a qualification what's really interesting now is, is that youngsters want to do apprenticeships so we've now got kind of young people who, who are looking for apprenticeships because they understand and they do look at them as an alternative to university. So you can go to university and get your quals or you can go and do an apprenticeship and get your quals. And, and we see that. So every apprenticeship that we advertise, we get about 15 to 20 people apply for it. We don't have a shortage of young people who want to come and do apprenticeships. A mate of mine's lad went to, um, was trying to get an apprenticeship as, a, as, a, as an electrician. Um, couldn't get one, ended up doing a college course instead. On the first day of his college course, the, the tutor said to him, look, if anyone, anyone in this room gets a shot at doing an apprenticeship, well, leave the room now. You know, because if you can get onto a proper apprenticeship, that's the way you're going to learn how to do the trade properly. Not going on a college course to learn to be an electrician. You don't learn that way. You need to get out there. You need to get on the tools. And you need to get learning. So I think young people's attitudes are changing. And the apprenticeship standard is certainly much better than it was. But we're still in the very, very early days of that. And it's a big old journey you go on. That's great news. And it's really good to hear that things are starting to change, especially for business owners in the trade and tradesmen who are working for themselves. And then hopefully this will encourage more apprentices into the trade, 
which is the main goal. So Andy, for Travis Perkins, what does the future look like for apprentices? So I think what we're trying to do with Travis Perkins is, is yeah, really work hard to bring more more apprentices into the sector and, and, and into the construction industry. Uh, we, we've got a, about 1,000, maybe 1,100 apprentices on programme ourselves at the moment, and we've set a big target to bring 10,000 apprentices in over the next um, over the next few years, between now and the end of 2030. And, and we appreciate it's complicated, but yeah, we're a big organisation. We managed to get to grips with that complexity, and we're really offering that help out to anyone else. We're already working with quite a few of our customers to give them guidance and advice and help them cut through some of the paperwork and admin that you have to do. And we're more than happy to work with anybody else who wants to do that. So, you know, if you want any support in terms of how to bring on apprentices, please get in touch and, and we're more than happy to work with you on it. Thank you so much for your time today, Andy. I know that you're a busy gentleman, but I really appreciate you taking the time out, answering the questions and in fact, sharing all the information that you have done today because it has been incredibly helpful. Trade Talk. Powered by Travis Perkins. So continuing on then from what Andy's just said about how they're going to change things and look at things, does that give you a little bit more confidence, Carl, if you were going to take on an apprentice? Yeah, um, with the levy change, that does make a big difference. Uh, obviously, getting the right people is the, the test of seeing what they're like, if they're good grafters, if you think it's slave labour by just using a brush. Yeah, I mean, that, that can be a problem with young... And I hate to say this because I don't want to stereotype, do you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. that can be a problem with, with young people where they think, oh, I'm going to be able to once we just sweep the floor. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But isn't that part of the job and part of learning, you know, the sort of it everything is. that goes part and parcel with it yeah. as well, isn't There's it? It's a big banter, isn't there with the building game uh, and any kind of trades you've got to have an open mind you can't take anything personal you've got to start at the bottom build your way up but what he was saying with the changes that is happening is it is convincing hopefully that's good because we need the new generation coming in with the new regulations and all the new solar panels and the heating regs and all the health and safety things that come in you need to to push that forward and you know if they're going to do that with all the apprentices Brilliant. Yeah, do you great. think that the do you think that it's misund, uh, misunderstood the the amount of uh, graft that's needed uh, to be to work in the trade? Do you think it's kind of uh, I don't know if misunderstood is the right word, but do you think sometimes it can be kind of uh, I suppose what's the word I'm looking for where people don't anticipate exactly what's needed? They think it's going to be a bit of an easy life, and then when they actually get on site, they're like, oh, hang on a minute, I've actually got to do something here. Yeah, it's more site, isn't it? It's not like say someone's loading up something in the back warehouse, and you just sat there twiddling your thumbs and on your phone in the corner where you can get away with it. Most of the time, when you're on site. You've got health and safety, which means that you've got to be near that apprentice and you've got to have other people on the site as well. So you can't get away with being on your phone. Otherwise, the phone's going in a bucket of water. So it's <laughs> so and with age as well. I mean, I know that Andy's mentioned that he's had older apprentices yourself as well, Rory. But how young, what sort of age have you taken on an apprentice? How young have you taken on an apprentice? So the typical age we'd take someone on ideally would be 18, 21. I'd like to take on someone who's had a bit of work experience prior, you know, worked in a restaurant, understand, you know, go into work, a bit of work in life. But we we don't sort of discriminate at all. So we've recently taken on a 16-year-old who's straight from school, even though by doing that, there is a lot of health and safety constraints because they are still classed as a vulnerable person. But you've got to give people a, a chance at that age and, you know, it's up to them to sort of prove themselves and us to work with them to, you know, help them get through their apprenticeship. And we've also had, we've got a guy who's 30, who's, you know, he really struggled to get an apprenticeship because over a certain age, you have got to pay apprentices a lot more money when they're over 21. You've got to, after, you've got to pay the minimum wage, even though they're not really earning you much for a couple, at least, a, you know, two, three years. So it was, you know, it is is tricky with different people, but he, he is brilliant. So I, I just think any, for anyone taking someone on, I don't think you should discriminate. I think, you know, they, they need to fully understand what's involved in the job from the outset. It's not going to be easy, but it is, you know, working in the trade, it's it's a great job. It's very rewarding. It's It's fun. You're doing something different every day. You're not in the same place. So I think for anyone out there thinking of joining an apprentice, doing an apprenticeship, I'd, my advice would be research what you want to do, speak to some people, maybe do a bit of volunteer work, try it out, understand the full lot, but yeah, go for it. I think you've got to work hard. You've got yeah. to put the time and for you as an employer then, so, I mean, you've got, you're going to invest a lot of time in that individual yeah. to train them up. So do you ever, you know, when you've met somebody new and you've said, you know, you don't want to discriminate, but there's got to be kind of a, surely a trial period. Do you in any yeah. way sort of implement something like that? Yeah, we, we offer a six-month probation period. And to be honest, 
it's difficult because it does take it, different people. I'm, I'm one of them people. It takes longer for certain people to get something than it does. Some people just pick something up quick. Some people don't. So you've got to give them a good opportunity to do that. But I think usually within that six month period, if it's not for them, it tends to be a mutual agreement where they're not enjoying it and they're not achieving, you know, the sort of the standards that you're you're setting. So, but I think you definitely need a probation period for both parties. Yeah. Just to, just for the boat for them to get a grip of is this going to be for me? Because if it's a if this is the career path you're choosing, you're a long time doing it not to enjoy it. What the, you what yeah. you pick, you've got to enjoy. Yeah. The, there needs to be more initiative for the actual uh, employers as well mm. to have someone that like you've just said, that can take that job and understand it the first time, or does he be, need to be told the second and the third, yeah. which is then quite annoying because you try to teach him. Well, then that's your time. So you're losing out money by by training these young, the newer generation of the new trainees who's coming in. You need to get something yeah. back off that. And when the, whoever's in charge of government, yeah. they've got to have the funding to say, there you go, mm. now it's worth it for you. And there's less funding for older apprentices. So anyone under 21, their college is fully paid mm. for by the government. But there is no, like like I was saying, then there's no funding for your t- the additional time. It's going to take you twice as long to do a job in the early stages to show them the mistakes they may make. So there's no funding at that point. But if they're over 21, we have to pay, I think it's like 600 quid a year for the older get. Whereas I don't think you should discriminate on that. I think if someone's no. doing an apprenticeship and we're trying to get more people on apprenticeship schemes, age shouldn't really be a The factor. maturity is there, isn't it? Yeah, You've got exactly. someone older, you know they're going to study, they're going to yeah. work harder. Well, a bit of life experience, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, I, when I was 16, I certainly didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, when I was 18, mm. 19, it's certainly very different from, yeah. you know, the, my career path that happened. So it's almost like when you're a bit older, you've probably, you've had a bit more life yeah, experience, tried. haven't yeah. you? And you've probably tried a few mm. things, like you say. And like we've talked about before, being in the trade, you are your own customer service representative, yeah. you're your own, you know, your own marketing executive your own sales you've got to have business you've got to be business savvy you've got to be able to talk to people as well you've got to be able to talk to and know how to conduct yourself in someone else's home as well so i think unless the help is out there you're not gonna it's hard for the young generate generation to actually step into an apprenticeship uh, it would be interesting to know how the trade is represented in schools as well and how it's kind of interpreted to young people in schools and you know whether there's the opportunity to like you say have funding where you know yourself as a plumbing firm, you know, and a well-established building firm as well, can actually go into schools. Yeah. Are they still doing open days and those sort of fairs that they, they see they did when I was a kid, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. But they don't seem to have anything that, no. from what I know of nowadays, where they can actually showcase no. what you do. The other thing I would say is, so the relationship of the apprenticeship, we we have the apprentices, our employee. The apprentice then goes to college and their assessor comes out every couple of months. But there's very little interaction between all three parties. Mm. So I don't really know what's expected from them from college. So I feel like if there was a bit more interaction on the, the syllabus, the college and yourself, rather than just you and the apprentice, the college and the apprentice, if it was a bit more collective, we might be able, you know, there might be a, a goal that everyone could achieve and what's expected, what the, you know, I just think that the whole thing is, it's there, it's great. Apprenticeship schemes are fantastic. I'm a massive advocate, but I just think the structure and the glue just needs to be yeah. a little bit better. Recently, I was asked to go into a primary school for the age of eight, and my boy was one of them, and hence the reason why I went in. And we had half a day of building and showing him how to mix cement, That's great. <laughs> build a wall in front of them, and uh, things like health and safety, hard hats, glasses, yeah. the goggles, and all the little things. And the, the attention that we got off the whole kids was steady. There was not one teacher that had to tell the kids to behave or anything. They were all just focused, and they all just wanted to get their hands dirty, like they wanted to get in the sand pit afterwards and everything. So, you know, that kind of thing can be promoted. But again, you know, that was something I did just for the school. That's great. You're yeah. not going to get paid, so you lose out your day again it comes back yeah. to it's got to be worthwhile yeah. for you to teach and to help everyone wants to help but you've got bills to absolutely. pay absolutely and then if, if these changes are coming in force and things are going to be reviewed uh, like apprenticeships are going to be reviewed if money is available mm-hmm. you know where the government are going to help the trade sort of make the trade not necessarily look desirable but look like something that is like you say achievable yeah. mm. and also that there is an actually well-established career compared to what it looked like when I was a kid because you know 20 years ago it was like oh, you want to be a builder it was almost frowned upon whereas mm. nowadays it, like you've said earlier in Germany it's a well-respected 
um, you know, career path to go down w- with an accolade and, 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 you know, an educational certificate. <laughs> I think tr- apprenticeships in in general, like uh, when Andy was saying about Travis Perkins, a lot of their apprenticeships won't be hands-on apprenticeships. They'll just be internal apprenticeships. Mm-hmm. And I think apprenticeships, you just think of plumber, electrician, builder. You don't think... We, we actually took on a while ago an office apprentice who and now he sort of runs the operations and the logistics of the business. So, again, I think apprenticeships needs to be talked about and blown up a bit more because yeah. there's, there's more to it than just your, your apprenticeships, you're your pigeonholed to trades, whereas that, for me, would be far better learning than going to university. I'm a kinetic learner. I learn by being on the job and doing, whereas some people uh, will go to university, study, write direct the thesis. Yep. So I think apprenticeships in general for all businesses could just be doing we talked about a bit more, just promoted what's out there. Thank you for joining us again today on Trade Talk, powered by Travis Perkins. I'm Sally Wallace, your host. Thank you to Carl and Rory in the studio with me today and also Andy, who has been able to join us down the line. Now, next episode, it's going to be everything building regulations. We're going to be joined once again by Carl, who is the owner of KLC Builders and also our expert that's going to be joining us, Lee Jackson, whole house director at Travis Perkins. Perkins. We've gone out and spoke to regional house builders and found out a whole load of their challenges. And we've been trying to see if we can make that easier. How can we start to drive things that offer solutions around, mostly around the building rates and new regulations and compliance that has to be achieved? We hope that you can join us then. Trade Talk, powered by Travis Perkins.